hello guys welcome back to another android firebase tutorial in the last episode we already learned about how to implement firebase real-time database in your android application in this video we are going to learn about how to perform the basic read and write operation on a firebase real-time database to read data from a real-time database First, get the database reference, then attach an asynchronous listener to the reference. So here is an example. To perform read or write operation, the first thing we have to access the root node of the JSON tree. So by using that root node, we can access the child nodes and we can perform the read or write operation on that child node. So here, uh, we create a variable called the mroot reference. And here, uh, by using these statements, we access the root node of the JSON tree. So here, we use the Firebase database and uh, use the get instance method and call the get reference method. So this will return the root node of that JSON tree. So the root node available on this variable called the m root reference. So by using that root node, we can access a child node. So here. Uh, we create another another variable child reference and by using the root node uh, you can call the child method and here you need to pass the key for the child node to get the real time data updates uh, you have to add some interfaces on the database reference so here i attach some add value even listener on the child node so if if there is any change on the database or the value if there is any value change uh, on the real-time database uh, in that case the on data change method will invoke so that method contain one parameter uh, it is an object of data snapshot uh, that variable contain all the needed methods and data so for get the data from the data snapshot uh, you have to call the get value method okay that is the read operation on a real-time database uh, now if you want to perform the write operation it is very simple you have to call the set value method on the database reference variable and here uh, you have to pass the data as parameter it is very very easy to perform the write operation on a real-time database so now i'm going to create a simple android application that contain both the read and write operation Uh, we can start with a new android studio project open android studio and start a new android studio project uh, specify your application name uh, select the md activity ok now the project is created uh, first we can attach firebase to this android application so open manifest folder open android manifest.xml and first here i'm going to add the internet permission for this application now copy the application pycage name now go to firebase console On Firebase console, you can create a new project or you can select an existing project. Here I'm going to select an existing project. Uh, select this option, add Firebase to your Android app. Here specify your application PyCage name. And here we got the JSON configuration file. Copy that file. Now go to Android Studio. Uh, first, change this one into Project View. Uh, you need to place that JSON configuration file within the app folder. So I place it here. Okay, now the JSON configuration file available within the app folder of your Android Studio project. Now we need to add some dependencies. 
so now uh, here i change that one into android now we need to add some dependencies and plugins for this android studio project uh, click continue copy this line now open the gradle script files on your android studio project open the project level gradle file add that line to the dependency section uh, now copy this plugin now open the module level gradle file add that line to the bottom of this file okay now we need to add the dependency for using firebase real-time database click finish uh, go to the firebase documentation section select the android guide Okay, these are the available libraries with Firebase. From here, uh, we can uh, we need to select the uh, dependency for using real-time database. So copy this line. Now add it to the dependency section of the uh, module-level Gradle file. Now sync the project. Okay, now the project build finishes. And now we can start the UI of the application. So this is the user interface for this application. Uh, this contain a hidden text view. So here uh, we have to retrieve some message from the Firebase real-time database and display it on the hidden text view. So here there is an edit text is available here. So here uh, you, user can enter his own heading and if the user click the submit button we have to write that heading to the real time database on the same time uh, we have to retrieve the uh, heading from the real time database and display on this text view. So here uh, user can select a font color for the heading text. So if user click the red button, uh, red radio button. Uh, we have to update the real time database with the color value red and if user select the blue color we have to update the uh, color value in a real time database at the same time uh, we have to update the font color of this uh, heading section so this is the ui of the application so now i will show you the uh, xml section so here the root element is a linear layout with orientation vertical so this is the heading text view with id uh, heading text here i place a linear layout uh, here is the edit text so user can enter the uh, enter a value for heading through this edit text with id uh, heading input and this is the button for submit the uh, heading input and here is the radio button section here i place a radio group that contain two radio buttons uh, with id uh, rb red and rb blue so this is the UI of the application. Now we can start the coding section. So open main activity dot Java here. First thing we have to declare some variables. I name it as heading text. Uh, create some variables for edit text I name it as heading input now create some variables for radio buttons I name it as rb red and rb blue Okay, now we need to connect these variables uh, with the uh, view components on the layout file uh, by using the find view by id methods. Okay, now here I connect the view components by find the view by id methods. Uh, now on the layout file for this button we have a click listener. For the button we have a click listener called a submit heading. So now we need to define this method in main activity. So copy this one. Now define that method here. Uh, 
uh, with the one parameter view <coughs> now we have another quick listener for the radio buttons so for the radio buttons we have another click listener called on radio button click so we have to define this method in main activity okay now we can start with the database section first we have to create some variables first we have to create an object for firebase database uh, firebase database dot get instance so by using the firebase uh, database instance we can access the root node of the json tree for that create another variable a uh, database reference I name it as m root reference by using the firebase uh, database instance you can call a method called the get reference so now we can access the child nodes so here we need two child first one is for the heading area uh, and second one is for save the color value so here uh, we have to create two child nodes and database reference I name it as M heading reference uh, by using the child node by using the root node uh, you can access the child now specify the key for the child I name it as heading now we can create a database reference for the color value font color so database reference i name it as m font color font color reference m root reference dot child and specify the key for it here i name it as font color okay so for this activity here uh, we have to implement an interface so implements a value even listener uh, here you need to implement some methods you need to implement two methods on data change and on cancel okay so for getting the real-time data updates uh, you need to add some listener for these two reference database reference variables uh, for that here I'm going to override one more activity lifecycle method on start method uh, from the on start method I'm going to set the listener for the database reference variables so here uh, we have to retrieve the real-time data updates for these two variables uh, for the if there is any data change on the heading area uh, we have to display the heading on this text view and if the user modify the color value or if the if there is any change on the color value on database uh, we have to update the color on this text view that means uh, we have to get the uh, real time data updates for these two root nodes sorry two child nodes a uh, heading reference and color reference so here uh, we have to specify the listener for the two uh, database uh, reference variables uh, first one is heading reference dot add value even listener this now for the second one m color font color reference dot add value even listener okay so if the user enter an heading through the edit text and if user click the submit button we have to write that information to the real time database so for that for this button we have a click listener called uh, submit heading and from this method uh, we can perform the write operation to the database so here we have to write the data to the database reference called hem heading reference so it's very easy 
first we have to get the information from the edit text string heading equal to heading input dot get the text now we can perform the write operation so hem heading reference dot set value and pass the data so this is the writing operation to the real time database it's very easy to write values to the real time database okay so if the user select any of these radio buttons in such situation we have to update the color on the font so for that uh, for this uh, for this project we need we have to add some color values So here I have some color values for blue and red color. Now open resource folder, open values folder, open color stored XML and add that value here. Okay now we can handle the radio button clicks. So if the user select the radio button this method will invoke. So the first thing we have to identify which radio button is clicked by the user. So here uh, we can uh, use a switch statement. A view dot get ID. Now we can start each case. First case if it is equal to r dot id dot rb red that means user click the red radio button. Uh, in that case we have to update the value in real time database so here we have to update this database reference called the m font color reference so we have to update the value on that database reference so m font color reference dot set value and here i pass the value red don't forget to add the break Okay, now specify the second case. If it is equal to the second radio button RB blue, uh, in that case, we are going to update the database with value blue. Okay, so now we finish the writing operation to the database. So if user enter a heading and click the submit button, uh, this method will invoke that method name is submit heading uh, in that method uh, we get the data from the user uh, and we update the real time database by using the set value method and after the writing operation we can clear the edit text area so adding input dot set to text okay so now we need to uh, retrieve the data updates so if there is any data change occur, this method will invoke, on data change method will invoke. So here uh, we have two database reference, first one is uh, heading reference and font color reference. Uh, both of these database reference use the same listener. So from this method, uh, we have to identify which data is actually changed. So first check some condition if data snapshot dot get value string dot class is not equal to null in that case we can perform some operation so here first thing we have to identify which data is actually changed for that uh, we need to get the key of the child denote so uh, string key equal to data snapshot dot get key so now we can check the condition so if key dot equals heading uh, that is the key for the database reference heading in that case we have to get the heading from the database and update on the text view string heading equal to uh, data snapshot dot get value 
uh, string dot class now update the uh, text to view so heading text to dot set the text and pass the heading okay this is the first condition now the second condition else if key dot equals sorry I placed the else if on the wrong area uh, it is comes to be here so else, else if key dot equals uh, font color in that case uh, we have to retrieve the font color and uh, we need to uh, change the uh, text to view color so first get the color string color uh, data snapshot dot get value ok now we can update the color on the text view so for that we have to check the condition if color dot equals red in that case we need to update the text view into red color so heading text dot uh, set to text to color uh, context combat dot get color get the color from color store xml so r dot color dot uh, get the red color uh, now check the second condition else if color dot equals uh, if it is blue color in that case the same thing we update the text to view color with the blue color at the same time we have to change the click status of the radio buttons so if you select the red color uh, we have to uh, make the uh, red radio button checked so here rb dot dot set check into true and here it is rb blue dot set check into true okay now we can test our application i install the same application on both of these virtual devices first go to firebase console uh, go to the database uh, go to roles now here the database is available for only authenticated user now here I provide a read permission for the public also provide a write permission for the public uh, for a real android application uh, you have to specify user authentication is very important now here uh, this database is available for public uh, now publish the database rules now go to the data section okay now we can start the application i start the application on both of these devices Now here I am going to provide an heading from one of these device. And click the submit button. And here on the database the data changes. 
Uh, this is the root node and here one child node is created with id heading and value good morning. Now try to update the uh, heading from the second virtual devices. And click the submit button and here the database change in real time at the same time the change appear on both of these virtual devices now we are going to change the font color so here I am going to use the radio button in one of these virtual device I change the font color into blue so here the color changes into blue at the same time in the database uh, there is another child node is created with key font color and value blue. Now I change into red color. Here database is updated with the font color value red. At the same time both these virtual devices receive the data change. Okay, so now uh, we are going to change it from the database viewer. So here I am going to change the heading. Hello from Firebase. Now we are going to change the database from the Firebase console. Click the add button and here we update the database and at the same time the changes available on both of these virtual devices. Now I am going to change the font color. Font color into blue and update it. So here the font color is updated at the same time the status of the radio button is also changed. So now this one change into blue we will try to change into red font color into red value red. Now here the status of the radio button into blue now change it in database and here the font color changes at the same time the status of the radio button is also changing. So this is how we perform the basic read and write operation on a Firebase real time database. I hope you understand all these concepts. For getting more Firebase video updates, please subscribe to this channel now. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.